let's talk about bed bugs and heat treatments. So this is a video. It's actually an updated video to a video I did almost three years ago called Why Heat Treatments Don't Work on Bed Bugs. And this is hopefully to update some information. Uh, most of the information hasn't really changed, but this is hopefully to, to shed some more light on why you do not want to do a heat treatment for bed bugs, why it's a bad idea. Not only is it really expensive, but it's just not effective. Um, not to the percentage that I feel that people should be trying to sell this work over a tech coming into your house and doing an actual chemical application. Um, are you a tenant? Do you live, uh, you know, do you have a landlord? Do you, does your landlord deal with the same exterminator? Do you have problems with, uh, you know, neighbors that have bed bugs and they, they're continuing to come into your apartment and you can't do anything about it because the exterminator that is hired by the landlord or the property management is coming in and doing heat treatments and they're just not effective. And they've come in three, four, five times. These are stories I have heard myself from people who call me because I'm on the internet. People call me from all over the world and they're like, I've been living in this apartment. I'm suffering from this problem. Is there anything that I can do? Um, this is hopefully going to help you guys. Send this to your landlord. Forward this around. There are cheaper, more effective alternatives. The problem is, is that no one understands how bed bugs react to a heat treatment. And this is what I'm hopefully here to explain to you and, and help you guys with. Are you living in your home? Do you have problems with bed bugs? Did you pick them up from a hotel? Did you bring them home? Uh, what do you do? You know, you don't have tenants living next door to you. You're just in a single family home. How do you get rid of your bed bug problem? Do, do you do heat because it's isolated? Can you do that? Can you just heat one room and, and hopefully kill your problem? Hopefully this video will, will uh, answer these questions and uh, help shed some light on why you do not want to do a heat treatment. Now, heat treatments, one, the main number one issue, this is why a heat treatment is not effective on bed bugs. The number one thing that I can tell you is that there's no residual. Now, what is a residual? A residual means that when you've treated a home, even when the pest control technician packs up and leaves, there's something still there to kill the bugs when the tech is not at your home doing his job. Um, that's a residual. So if I treat around, for example, in your kitchen cabinets, like say, let's, let's say you had some cockroaches get in the house and you've got cockroaches living underneath your kitchen cabinets and I come in and I treat underneath your kitchen cabinets and then I collect my money and I leave. All right, what is there killing the bugs when I'm not there? That's called a residual pesticide. Now, that's so when roaches hatch, they, uh, or, or, you know, other roaches crawl under the sink and find places underneath the sink to live, they crawl through the chemical and they die because the chemical doesn't lose its effectiveness. Oh, it loses effectiveness over a period of time, basically. So the areas that are treated remain treated for like a week, two weeks, four weeks, a month, sometimes 90 days. It just depends on the pesticide and the label. All right, so when you turn the heat machine off, the air around the heat machine gets cold. Immediately, heat disperses. It's energy, so it disperses. And it's, it's not going to stay hot forever, and it's not going to kill the bed bugs forever. And so the main reason that I did that number one video back years and years ago, two, almost three years ago, uh, was to explain that bed bugs don't die from a non-residual treatment. So you, you've you got a heat machine hooked up and you turn it off, the heat con cuts off, or the heat turns on. All right, let's say you turn the heat on. This is how heat treatment works. The heat turns on, bed bugs heat up, they start going crazy, moving all over the place, and they die. All right, but they don't all die. Some bed bugs make their way into the uh, cabinets. Some bed bugs make their way into wall voids. Some bed bugs go into your furniture, uh, into like a cushion, like deep into a cushion where it's insulated. 
um, they might go into a wall socket, like right behind the bed, which I have a wall socket right behind my bed where the headboard hits up against the wall. It's actually really difficult to get to that wall socket because it's behind the headboard. Um, you know, so these are places that bed bugs can go to get away from heat treatments. All right, the way I explain this to people is say, let's say you go to the beach and you're laying on a nice warm sand and it starts to get warmer and warmer and warmer until you're like, wow, I'm hot. And so you go and you jump in the ocean and you cool down and then you come back up and you lay on the sand again and you start getting warmer and warmer again. And so what happens when you go and you get in the ocean, you're moving to a more comfortable place because you get too hot. Heat is a gradual increase of temperature. So what happens, even with fans, you know, they'll say, oh yeah, but we use fans to divert the heat. So these areas get hot really, really fast. It's actually not true. It still takes time. It still takes time for the surface to warm up. It takes time for the walls to warm up. It takes time for the beds to warm up. And while they may be killing some bed bugs, not all the bed bugs die. And the ones that make it into the wall voids or into the deeper parts of the cushions of your couch or your, your bed, they just aren't getting hot enough. The temperatures to kill adult bed bugs have to be 118 degrees or more. The temperatures to kill bed bug eggs have to be in the positives of 125 degrees. Now, this is Fahrenheit. I don't do Celsius conversions, but I'm sure there's a converter out there somewhere on Google. You can go and you can convert for people that live in uh, Europe or other, other countries that use a Celsius type, type uh, system. But it's 125 degrees Fahrenheit to kill the eggs, and that's in plus degrees, above 125 degrees. So that's really, really hot. Now, when you use a heat machine, the heat heat rises. So the area in the house that it's hottest is up near your crown molding or your ceilings. That area is going to be really hot. And in order for the whole room to be at temperature, like typically 130 degrees is what everything needs to be at in order to kill eggs, and it has to remain that temperature for at least eight hours, that's a long time. Is your guy coming in doing it that way? Is he, is he heating the room up for that long? Is it remaining at that temperature for that long? It has to be a constant heat. It can't be one of these things where it gets hot and then gets cold and then gets hot and then gets cold. It has to remain at that temperature. And like I said, even when they turn the machines off, any bed bugs that have retreated into the wall in your insulation that's designed to keep your house warm or cold, it's designed to keep the heat out. So if they get in the insulation, they're safe. What they'll do is they'll come out of the insulation that night and they'll bite you. So what people have been doing in order to continue to push heat treatments is they come in and they'll do a heat treatment on your entire house or your apartment or whatever. And then they'll wait, they'll turn the machines off, they'll come in after it gets more comfortable, and they'll treat around your baseboards and your bed rails and stuff like that with a residual pesticide. Now, this goes back to that residual word again. So they make residual pesticides that you can treat for bed bugs with that will kill bed bugs. A lot of your bigger name brand companies don't use the right residual pesticide because people will comment on this video and they'll say, well, I've sprayed all kinds of stuff. I've been treating my beds. I've been treating my uh, furniture. I've been treating my baseboards. I've been treating with all kinds of different sprays. I bought five or six different ones at Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever you go to buy your chemicals, and none of them work. And I will have to admit that none of them do. And the reason this is, is because of chemical immunity. So bed bugs develop an immunity to pesticides, much like cockroaches do. And so what you have to do is you have to use a chemical no one else is using and also is labeled for bed bugs because the label is important. If it's not on the label, you don't know if the chemical is going to kill bed bugs or not. Like peppermint essential oil. You know, bed bugs aren't on the label of essential oil. You don't really know. You're just going on what someone else has told you. Um, so there's a really good chemical out there called Crossfire. I've got videos on it. I've got information on it on my website. Uh, not my website, but on my uh, YouTube videos and everything where I show people how to use it. Uh, just go through and, and watch my bed bug playlist. I've got over 30 some 
videos in my playlist of, of how to get rid of bed bugs yourself. All right, so Crossfire is a pesticide that is labeled only for bed bugs. Now, the reason a lot of pest control companies do not use Crossfire is because in order to switch a pesticide, all right, let's say I come to your house and I'm treating for ants and I'm using something like Temperate because Temperate is labeled for ants. It's also labeled for bed bugs. It's a general use pesticide that's used for lots of things, not just bed bugs. So I come in your house and I'm treating around for ants, cockroaches, silverfish, spiders, whatever, and I'm using this generic pesticide. And then your neighbor has bed bugs. And so I go in his house and I spray the same thing for bed bugs. Now, temperate, you can't use on a mattress. So you can use it on, you know, around like bed frames and stuff like that, but you can't use it on the mattress where the bed bugs live. So this is the issue with your bigger box companies is they've got so many people working for them. They can't just dedicate one tank to Crossfire, give it to that guy and say, all right, go out there and kill a bunch of bugs today and then do one bed bug job because that's just not the way it works. In order to change a chemical from one, uh, if you have a spray tank, and you're switching pesticides from one to the other, you want to triple rinse your tank. You want to get rid of your rinse aids. You want to have a brand new, practically brand new tank to mix Crossfire in because that's the way that Crossfire works. It's just not economically feasible for these guys to come out there and have, you know, a tank for every single bug. You know, they, they, it, it does make sense to have a tank for bed bugs if you're doing a lot of bed bug work. But if the guys are only doing one or two bed bug jobs, they're not going to carry a tank and they're not going to stand there and spend, you know, 20 minutes rinsing out a tank either. That's, that's the problem with, you know, dealing with these bigger companies. Um, now I'm not saying all big companies are like this. I'm not saying because, you know, like for example, Orkin is a franchise. Some of the guys that work for the smaller branches of Orkin do have these uh, smaller tanks. But what you can do, you're now informed. You're an informed consumer. You know what works. Go to these people and tell them, I want this chemical. I want that chemical. If you're not going to do this, then I'll call someone who will. So hopefully this has been informative to you. I don't want to trail on too long. I know that's like the number one thing I get told off for. Uh, I hope this has been a good update to my heat treatment video from, like I said, three years ago. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. Uh, hopefully this has helped clear up a lot of issues around heat treatments and why they're not really that effective. And you should really go with more of a residual than something that, you know, just isn't going to last. You guys have a really great day. I appreciate it. And like I said, like the video if you like it. Subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell up there so you can find out when I'm live. I do live streams every now and then when I get a chance and answer people's questions. Um, hopefully, I'll get time to do that. This weekend, I've got a bed bug job abroad. Usually, I will do uh, videos when I'm doing something like that. So hopefully, I can get up there and answer some questions for you guys. Uh, have a really great day. I really appreciate it. And hopefully... This has helped. Thanks a lot. Bye.